The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Good morning, folks. Uh, not the voice of Larry Pesavento. This is Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry. Uh, if you're listening in live, well, uh, that's great. And I would love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, if uh, this show is going to be replayed during my normal hour at 1 to 2 p.m. So if you're listening to that show, we'll try to make today's show as pertinent as we uh, can. Of course, if you can't give us a call, you can always uh, reach me by email. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. If you'd be kind enough to put radio show question in the subject heading that make it easier for me to spot your email and we'll get right to your question so let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific tuesday currently we've got the uh, dow equity futures all equity futures contracts are trading lower the dow by 108 points trade down to 27088 the s p off 16 points the russell down about 10 and the nasdaq off 63 points so overseas last night all of asia traded higher closed higher as did australia uh the dax is morning is uh, taking it in the short, so to speak, off 283 points. That's two and a quarter percent to the downside. We'll take a look at that for uh, Nick, who sent in a request at about eight o'clock this morning. The FTSE is off 20 points, about a quarter of a percent. You've got gold up uh, about nine dollars, trading at 1429. Silver's up eight pennies. That's a half a percent to the upside, trading at 1652. And light sweet crude is up a quarter, trading out at 5711. Bonds relatively flat out here. So where do we want to begin? I'll tell you where we begin is uh, we'll begin by just simply take a look at natural cycles that exist inside the uh, market. And that's this cycle right here. That's the, uh, that's the cycle of the average Dow movement over the last 86 years out here. And what you can see is that uh, we typically see the actual summertime blues top occur in July. It's typically right around, it has averaged out to be about July the 21st, and then the market moves lower into the uh, middle of October, and that's really where the uh, Santa Claus rally begins. So we're truly right now, it's really not the so-called sell in May is a myth. It would really be, it doesn't, the sell in July just doesn't seem to rhyme or what have you, or, uh, and I forget the name of the lad that uh, produced the uh, seasonal cycle data, just it needs to be updated. Well, here you go. It's updated. It's really the sell in July cycle, not the sell in May. Now, May forms an initial top, and then you see uh, price typically move lower into about the uh, June time frame, and then one last move to the upside, and boom, then to the downside. So that's the cycle. That's if you were swimming in the ocean. That's the uh, tide. And right now, the tide would appear to be, uh, well, going out. I don't know if it's coming in or going out. Let's just say it's going low lower is what the tide says out here. So now what we got to do is go take a look at the markets and see what type of signals we can see out here. And to do that, um, and that was the Dow that we were looking at. So if you're going to take a look at the Dow to try to understand, is it following through with its cycle? Well, all you have to do is come out here and take a look at one of Tommy DeMarc's tools. One of his tools, uh, which is called the TD Sequential System, we got a confirmed sell on the trading day of, uh, that confirmed on the trading day of July the 18th. The reason why it confirmed that is because it closed lower than the trading session close on July the uh, 12th out here. Now, this is a daily cash indice that we have. So this uh, this is, uh, and this would have said the top would have been July 16th. That was the interest session high out here versus July 21st. We're really not going to worry about Stevie's charts and whether it's July 21st or July 30th or July 16th or whatever the date might be. We're using it as a benchmark frame of reference to understand what the Dow typically does. And then what we do is we look for topping signals and patterns out there and voila, that's the signal and the pattern that is in play inside of the uh, Dow. Now, 
in order for the Dow to really change its trend out here, it would really need to close below the bottom of its profile. And to a certain extent here, let me pull over this chart. Now, this is a Dow Equity Futures contract. We don't have the same TD sequential count on it. We can see that price is trading below the bottom of its profile, 27,175. So the question that you and I have to answer this morning is... Um, well, the Dow's giving us the signal, but the others, are they following along? Because really, in order for markets to move lower, at least here in the U.S., we need to see all of the markets move lower. And we don't have change in trend signals in the other indices, at least not just yet. Maybe we get them. Maybe it's, I don't know that it'll be today, um, but we can take a look at what are the numbers that you and I are going to be watching. So we'll certainly do take a look at that. Now, with regard to the ES Mini, as an example, in reference to the S&P 500, here's what we know. We know that coming off of the low in June, if we just simply do our wave count, now that's one of Basil Chapman's tools, but what I'm showing you is not the uh, Chapman wave. Instead, it's just simply the letter counting out here. And what Stevie, that's me, Stevie Perseverance Roads likes to look for are those seventh wave moves. Now, those seventh wave moves, those are letter G on my system. The reason there's, I still, it's, if you count the letters A through G, you see G is number seven. That's your seventh inning stretch, so to speak. And they can't identify tops or bottoms out here. So you've got that pattern in play. You had a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal that had confirmed out here on the trading day of July 16th. That was a short signal. And in fact, what that did, because whenever you get a bottom or a top signal, what you then are looking for is support or resistance, in this case here, support. What was support? Support was the bottom of the box, 26, uh, 29.69.50. They actually hit that tick to the day, July 19th. That was a, a Friday. We can see that that held. Price moved higher, did it into the trading session of July 26th right around that July 27 time frame. Boy, that's interesting with regard to the markets. Uh, makes that seventh wave move letter G, but also price but gives you a another signal of a Rhodes Momentum indicator top. Now that topping signal from July 26 may be confirmed today. The reason I say maybe is because we don't know what the end of day candle looks like. In order for this pattern to confirm, you must have a bearish reversal candle. That should be easy to do because of yesterday's doji candle. And dojis are really important upper resistance. Well, yesterday, what you saw was the ES Mini was testing resistance. That was the top of its daily profile out there. So any close lower today because of yesterday's doji candle out there, the Japanese would refer to it as the leaves falling off of the tree out here would be a signal that you should anticipate lower price. Now, the reality is, let me give you the straight scoop, the straight poop on this. You've got to see the ES Mini closed below 3,675. Get below 3,675. That's the center of its current profile. Of course, there's a new one that is attempting to form. We'll take a look at that during the uh, during this uh, hour as well. But price must close below that in order for it to go explore 29.69.50. That's where the metal, that's where the uh, rubber meets the road, so to speak, out here. You must see a close below 29.69.50 inside the ES Mini that join the Dow Equity Futures contract, which says that a change in trend is in place out here in order for things to get rocking and rolling to the downside. So there's your ES Mini. We took a look at the uh, Dow. I know that uh, Nick wants to take a look at it on the 60-minute base as well as the uh, DAX. By the way, with regard to the DAX out here, if we take a look at it, you can see a total change in trend signal. That's coming off of its May 31st low. We're just looking at closing prices right here. But you can do the trend line, and you can see that it was broken this morning, as Tom likes to say, in spades. Steve Rhodes with TFNN filling in for Larry Pesavento. We'll be back in just a few. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. I'm Steve Rhodes, filling in for Larry Pesavento. And so our first question came in from Nick A. And Nick wanted to take a look at the DAX and the Dow, but he wanted to take a look at Dow Equity Futures contract using a 60-minute time frame out here. The DAX, here's the 60-minute time frame, uh, Nick, for the DAX. Unfortunately, my tools don't get a, uh, my system, my other set of tools, which we'll take a look at the white background charts, uh, don't get a live feed of the uh, DAX. I got to figure that one out. And so I can't go to that to help you identify support or resistance. All that you and I, or all that I can do right now, is just take a look at swing points, recognize that we're below the swing point out here from 3 o'clock in the morning on July the 18th, and that would just suggest that price would likely be targeting the 11,987 area. That's the June 18th swing point that took place about 4 o'clock in the morning. So that's all that I've got out there. With regard to other patterns like A to B equals CD patterns, I don't have that. We take a look at the daily time frame. The reason I say I don't have that is this retracement on the trading session of July 20th. 25th was, you know, like an 80 or 90 percent uh, retracement. And so that doesn't really set up much of an A to B equal CD to the downside. So no reason to to watch that either. And I don't have anything on the uh, daily time frame to help identify a level of uh, support uh, at this stage. But we can go take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract, Nick, and take a look at it. And we had already discussed the 30-minute uh, time frame chart. Now, the reason why we discussed the 30-minute time frame chart is I've got this tool out here. It lets me know. This one I've sit in front of my screen. I can quickly take a look at uh, those things, those instruments that I want to be paying attention to, but I'm actively trading. 
and uh, take a look at what's going on on the shorter term time frame. So I typically am looking at the 30 minute, the one hour, the two hour, the five hour time frame. And I'm looking for my system to generate. All these things are automatic out here. They tell me what the condition uh, of the chart is for that time frame. And then uh, over on the right hand side, uh, they tell me whether or not there's a Rhodes momentum indicator top or bottom signal. So right now, the only bottom signal in the equity futures contract comes from the Dow, and that's on its 30 minute time frame. With regard to gold, I've got top signals on a 30 minute and a one hour time frame. So it just allows me to focus real quickly and be able to understand what's going on. I've got it for the larger time frames as well, daily, weekly, monthly time frames. Uh, but uh, especially this time of day, early in the morning before the market opens in about 10 minutes, we like to see if there's some kind of tell in the marketplace. Um, you know, I used to do the 9 to 11 o'clock segment for years out there. Always loved doing 9 to 10, especially because it was pre-market. And so pre-market allowed us to say, okay, we, we got the opportunity to play liar's poker. What was the real message of the market? You might see the market trading lower like the Dow by 100 points. But what did that really mean out here? And the really meaning, so to speak, depended upon the time frame that we were looking at. So in this case here, what we can see, we took a look at the um, ES mini, the daily time frame. We took a look at those Rhodes momentum indicator tops. This is the opposite out here. Now, it's a 30 minute chart, Nick. We'll go take a look at the 60 minute. But again, we can see that price is pushing lower, doing less relative energy. Doesn't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And the swing would be some type of bullish reversal signal. The bulls and bears, the buyers and sellers have got with just one role for you and I, and that's simply to paint those candlesticks. And it's really important for you and I to understand the real bullish and bearish reversal candles to assist us with our trading and investing. So doesn't look like we're going to get a bullish signal in the next nine minutes, but anything could happen in the next nine minutes. But here's Nick's um, here's Nick's 60 minute time frame chart. So what's a 60 minute time frame communicating to Nick? Well, first of all, what is communicating to all of us, we can see that this topped with your Gartley cell pattern out here. So let me get my cursor going. It did it yesterday. Really, the confirming signal came in at midnight. You see, there was no, even though I, I have the pattern drawn in here, and of course, Larry LP, he taught me this pattern as he's taught it to each of you out here. But the key is, when does the pattern complete? Now, I'm going to go ahead and erase the pattern. And it's got to complete, for me, it's got to complete with some type of topping signal. Now, just happens to be that this pattern has completed twice or confirmed twice. The one topping signal that it generated at midnight, that was uh, midnight and uh, yesterday, was a TD setup nine count pattern. You'll see the numerical sequence on my system here and when you get to bar nine well really when you get to bar eight you have to be the hair on the back of your neck must stand up if you have any i've got a fresh shave out here so i don't have much just uh, just uh, but that's besides the point but here is the point uh, a top or bottom can form when you get to bars eight nine or the bar following nine well that's exactly what happened here and then to just prove that point of that gartley cell pattern uh you had a, a move higher and a little shooting star uh, i was sorry that was at 11 o'clock not midnight and and then you had a follow through candle, bearish, uh, bearish engulfing candle um, at uh, exactly at midnight. And then what price has done, it's come down to test where it had most recently broken out, Nick. <clears throat> On the 60 minute time frame, that was 27,116. That was established by that TD setup nine count. So price is below that. Ordinarily, Nick, you and I would say, hey, price is below that, it's going to head lower. <clears throat> Lee Corso would say, if he were doing the charting right now, he would say, Nick, not so fast. The reason why he would say not so fast is you got to love these patterns. So on the 60 minute time frame, the bar that formed at nine o'clock was bar number eight. So now the hair on the back of your neck must be standing up or should be standing up because a bottom could occur, could have occurred at nine or it could occur at 10 or it could occur at 11. Those would be the only three time frames out here where the TD set up nine count because it could be the low bar eight, nine, bar, bar eight, nine, or the bar following nine. Now that's the beauty of the pattern. Does it always work? No, but it works so often that you must pay attention to it. And when it doesn't work, it tells you about momentum to the upside out here. So <clears throat> that's your signal at 9.24 in the morning on the Dow Equity Futures contract, we know the 30-minute chart, we would be waiting for a bullish reversal candle to signal to signal at least a counter-trend rally or maybe some type of bottom out here. Likewise, the uh, one-hour chart uh, has reason to say caution to the downside. So the beauty of looking at the shorter-term time frames and you stepping to the screen and seeing that the Dow Equity Futures contract is off 100 or the NASDAQ down 65, is this will stop you from 
maybe taking action that you shouldn't take action until it would be confirmed out here. And that's how you and I read the message of the markets. Now, for those longer-term time frame traders out there that are trying to understand, hey, is that seasonality really kicking in out here? Well, one of the things that you and I want to pay attention to are our TAS market profiles. They also help us measure support and resistance. What you're looking at on my screen is Stevie's advanced Doppler radar reading out here. You're going to see a new set of profiles in the ES and the NQ. <clears throat> now, those may not take hold out here. When I say it's an advanced warning system, I do mean advanced, and these numbers can change out here. So we've really got two sets of numbers to watch. The bottom of the ES mini profile is now 2981, just slightly above where yesterday's profile was, which is 2969.50. Inside the NQ, it does make a difference. If this is truly the new profile, the number to be watching here is 788620 versus yesterday, that bottom of that box was 779470. Now, you might be saying to me, and I can kind of hear you, Stevo. What does that really matter out there? Come, come on. What's it matter? Well, for you, for for you, for the you youths that say, what does it matter? All we have to do is look at this chart right here. This chart here for the ES Mini. What you need to know is in markets that are moving to the upside, sustained bullish markets. Price will just simply pull back to test support. Those are the green arrows. You don't get a change in trend until you break support. Those are the red arrows. Right now, we've just got a yellow arrow, so to speak. A, year, a yellow arrow in Stevie's quiver. So swing traders, ain't going to be no change in trend until you see a close below the bottom of the daily box in the ES Mini. I'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even
we give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And we're off to the races. Right now, we got the uh, opening of the market. You got the Dow down 94 points, S&P off 16, NASDAQ off 55, Russell's off 9, semis are down 18 points, so a little over 1%. So they're the leader at the opening gate. They are leading the charge to the uh, downside. Uh, spot volatility index is up uh, trade down to 1395. We're going to take a look at that. That's up um, about 9% uh, this morning. But let's go to our first question, our second question that came in. This is from Ben. Ben writes in, what does bull over mean on your TAS? Uh, saw that for your five-hour time frame. So Ben, Ben is referring to this. Uh, this was, we were taking a look at my short-term time frame signals out here. So I pulled this over. Um, and what Ben was looking at is this little five-hour outlook. So the market outlook shows uh, right here for the Russell 2000 says bull over. Uh, so bull over says that the bullish move on a five-hour time frame, Ben, if that's what you were using as your uh, as the time frame that you were trading, uh, would in essence tell you that you've broken through support. Now, I'll actually go ahead. Remember, we were taking a look at the bottom of those profiles on a daily basis just as we went into the breakout there. Uh, so let's go. And well, Ben is really up uh, early out here. He's out in Hawaii. Man. I got to love it. Yeah, you are my hero, Ben. I got into technical trading well, for a couple of different reasons. But what my initial intention was and where I began uh, and how I began working with Larry Pesavento was uh, my intention was to just uh, pack up and move to uh, move to Lanai. I know you're not on Lanai, uh, but you can kind of <laughs> say I don't I don't have a problem being with just a few thousand people with just a beautiful golf course. And in any event, and, and the whole reason that I began really immersing myself in technical uh, in, in understanding the technicals of the uh, market was so that I could trade currency pairs because there you're trading those 24 hours and it was much easier with regard to the time time frames and time zones but getting back to your question out there so we're looking at stevie's i call that my bob system bullish or bearish out there and here's the five hour chart for the uh, for the russell 2000 what we're going to see is that uh, this tells me tells you if you're following along with that that price is broken through support when you break through support says you go down to the next level of support now on a five hour time frame if that's what we're using for the russell 2000 and we don't have any new profiles that are out here. The last one, which price broke through, was 1564.30 or 1559. So the target, first of all, your logical target has to be the prior swing points. That's in about the 1545 level. But where the Russell 2000 on a five hour time frame broke out, Ben, was at the price point of 152080. And so you get below that 1545 ish area. If it does, that would become your price target. Pulling back to where price previously broken out on the time frame chart that you're uh, paying attention to, you're watching, uh, that would be normal out here. So that's what uh, bull over means when taking a look at the five hour time frame chart. For the Russell 2000, uh, and then answered your question: What do your patterns show for price targets today on the Russell 2000? So uh, there, there, there you go. As Gus would say in my big fat Greek wedding. We also have another question coming in from um, Tim. Tim wants to take a look at uh, BlackRock. So to do that, what we do is um, is uh, we change over to our three time frame. This is how we start off. This is how I like to start off uh, in being able to help you answer what is a BlackRock. That's a Blackstone, not BlackRock. I apologize. Blackstone, which is ticker symbol BX. It would be helpful if I actually gave you the right name of the uh, equity that, uh, you know, that somebody's calling in or in this case here, emailing in on. So here's what you and I know right now. And Tim is in Golden, Colorado. You've got to love that. And, Tim, here's what we know right now. Just taking a look at this chart here. We're first just trying to identify uh, key levels of support or resistance. We're also trying to understand where's price trading on a daily, weekly, monthly, and even quarterly time frame. What we know about the Blackstone Group is, yes, price is pulling back, but there's a brand new profile that formed yesterday. Price is trading above the top of that box, 46.96. What does that mean? That means the first level of support on a pullback is going to be 46.96. 
If price were to get below that area, and I don't know if it will or it won't, if it were, price would then pull back to 45.54. If you were an intermediate term time frame chart uh, uh, investor, you wouldn't really give a rat's patootie about the, I guess you can't use rat today. I, I won't go there, but uh, I, I did. And if you're looking at the uh, weekly time frame chart out there, you can see that price is trading above the top of its weekly profile, and that's 46.82. So in a pullback, you'd be looking for a support to hold at 46.82. You're well above the monthly set of profiles, so everything there looks good. Now what we have to do is we've got to go to Stevie advanced set of tools out here. This helps us to understand, hey, where, what are we doing in relationship to support and resistance out here? Now, with regard to Blackstone Group, what we can see is price has been moving higher, doing it with less relative energy, and yesterday was that bearish engulfing candle. Now, what that does is that confirms a top out here. And when you confirm a top, it says that what you should do, what price should do, is go down and test support. Well, we just discussed how it's above support at 46.96 level. So price really should get back to there. 45.54 would be the next uh, level out there. And if price were to break below that, then where Blackstone Group broke out from, the price that it broke out from was $39.12. And that's what you would be looking at. This says just be careful because you have kind of a mixed signal here. You do have a top. But price is still above uh, support out here, hasn't broken support. And it would really all depend upon where you're at in the trade, what your time frame horizon is, and so forth. Now, we don't want to just stop there because I mentioned your time frame horizon. So what we want to do is say to Tim, Tim, last week, so far, was the high in Blackstone. And that was bar number eight. And what you and I know is that a top can form using the TD setup nine count pattern on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. Now, what we don't know, and you have to have at least the ninth bar confirmed. And the only way the ninth bar gets confirmed this week is if price closes over bar number five. What is bar number five? That is 47.21. I'm referring to the close of bar number five, not the high of bar number five. So that's what you would be watching for. So the weekly could be giving you a, a, chain, a, a signal of a top, says that price would pull back to support. Remember, support here is 46.82. You've also got support at 45.92. That's Stevie's green line. And then the final level of support, well, can't say the final level. The next level of support would be 42.36. And if that gets busted through to assist you with your trade, where price broke out using the TD setup nine count tools to help us identify that is 33.05. That's your intermediate term time frame. I don't have any, any, uh, any signals to suggest a top longer term, even longer term, and that would be on the monthly. So thanks for writing in. I hope that that helps you out with regard to uh, Blackstone uh, Group. And of course, folks, I'd love to hear from you. You know, there's about uh, 20 minutes left in the show. You can reach me at 877-927-6648, or what you can do is you can uh, send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Just put radio show question inside that uh, inside that subject heading. So what else is it that you want to watch today, folks? What is it that you want to watch today? You want to watch, here's the deal. You will get from me just the facts. You will not get everything, which is really important out there because otherwise it could just be BS before Steve shared with you the facts, the facts that we're taking a look at, how markets make bottoms, how markets make tops, what to be paying attention to out here. I mean, it's just, it's, and, and what I mean by that is, and I, you know, I mean, in my background, I've got the TV screen is going and I've got the old, you know, uh, Trump beating up uh, Powell about, uh, you know, lowering rates out there. When we come back from the break, I'll show you a chart that shows you that that, that statement is pure BS. Mark would be 10,000 points higher. We'll be right back, though. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. Right now, you can spend only $495, and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars, so you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of The Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, this is Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining me. And uh, you can always catch my show at uh, 1 to 2. Uh, today's show is going to be, uh, this show is going to be replayed between 1 and 2. So uh, if you're new, if you haven't heard of me uh, before, uh, listen, you can always catch the archives as well or go to the YouTube channel and you know, watch those uh, or listen to those while you're driving around. If you really want the honest information about what the markets are doing. And, you know, you've got the Fed that is going to uh, likely go ahead and reduce rates out here. It has nothing to do with the stock market. That is for sure. So when you see tweets that say, hey, you know, if uh, rates weren't moving higher, the market would be up 10,000 points. That is absolute BS. Before Steve shared with you this chart here, because you see, folks, that is just simply not the way the markets operate. And this is, I don't want you to fall into some kind of trap out here. I don't want you to fall into trap thinking that if rates rise, that the markets are going to get crushed. That's what the media out there, the financial news media, this stuff here that I'm looking at, there's no reason that they can't look at it like this. There's no reason why they can't go back and do a little bit of fact checking. This goes back 27 years to 1993. The bottom portion of my chart is the S&P 500. The top portion is just the short-term 13-week Treasury bills. You can see when interest rates are rising out here. You see that in, in each and every single time frame. Now, we're looking at monthly time frames, so we get rid of a little bit of noise out here. What does the market do? The S&P 500 specifically when interest rates rise, the market goes up. The S&P 500 has been moving higher since 2015, well, since 2009, clearly, but since 2015, when interest rates, short-term interest rates, started moving higher as well. You see, those are the facts. So don't get taken don't get taken by what goes on out there. Now, what really is important, because what you and I are interested in is, hey, what's the market going to do next out here? Is it heading higher or lower? Are we in that, we're in that unfavorable seasonal cycle? So what is it that we need to be paying attention to? Well, one of the things that we need to be paying attention to is, is the spot volatility index. 
Okay, you and I, we don't really care what the spot volatility index is trading at. Right now, it's trading at 1381. It wouldn't matter to you and I if it was at 1381 or if it was at 45 or if it was at 65. It just doesn't matter what the number is. Do not get taken by what that number is. It doesn't matter whether it's at 9, it's at 13, it's at 14. What matters is... Where is the spot volatility index trading in relationship to its 50-day exponential moving average? That's what this chart shows you. This chart just simply tells you the way that it is. The bottom panel of this chart is the spot volatility index. That's the blue line. The red line is the 50-day exponential moving average, which, by the way, is priced at 1425. That's the number you want to have on a pad of paper today. That's what you're going to be looking at. Is there a close above that? You see, if you go back to the left-hand side of the chart, back in 2018, the yellow rectangle helps you to show what the S&P 500 was doing during the time period where the spot volatility index was trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. Go next to that when we saw the rally. Now, this is not going to call the top or call the bottom out here. But what it is going to do, it's going to give you the information you need to understand a sustained uptrend in the S&P or a sustained downtrend in the S&P. And what typically occurs, you can then see in that green rectangle box out here that the spot volatility index was below its 50-day exponential moving average. And what did the S&P 500 do on average? Then go forward into the high that took place out here in May, the May Day high out here. And where was the spot volatility index? It was above its 50-day exponential moving average. So where are we now? Well, where we're at right now is we are still below that level. So I don't want you to get trapped into a short position. Do we have signals in the Dow? Do we have a potential signal in the S&P 500? Do we have a signal in the NDX 100? And the answer is we do. But in order for a sustained move in the markets to actually take place, and it is this simple, you can go back and do your own fact checking. Go take the spot volatility index, go back as far as you want. I suggest you go back into 2007, 2008, 2009, and there you will see when the spot volatility index was in the 50s and 60s and 40s out there, then you will see that the number itself doesn't mean a thing. The question is always, where is it trading in relationship to its 50-day exponential moving average? Now. You've got the New York Stock Exchange. That's what tool I know that Larry likes to take a look at, and so do I, even though we can't trade it out here. But it gives us a general feeling for what's going on. And here what we can see is you can see if you look to the right-hand side of the panel, down towards the bottom, what you're going to see is you're going to see a set of declining tops in panel number three. Panel number three is the advanced decline oscillator. I know you might say, what's an oscillator, Stevo? An oscillator is the difference between two, between two things. In our case, the two things are going to be energy are going to be the exponential moving average. In this case here, we use the 39 and the 19 periods. Why? Because it is rocket science out there. Literally is rocket science. I won't go into that story just yet. But here's the deal. When that advanced decline oscillator reading is below zero, buy sellers are the ones that are in control. What we really pay attention to is is price rising or moving sideways. But yet what it has is it has a declining tops pattern. So the New York Stock Exchange for quite some time, uh, when I say quite some time, since about uh, July 3rd, has been signaling that there is a top that is forming in the market. Now, how far is that going to take price down to? That's where we go back to our support levels, whether it's our TAS market profiles and the equity futures contracts or some other tools that Stevie has. But the key here is there's not going to be a sustained move in the New York Stock Exchange let alone the other markets, until you see the spot volatility index closing above and staying above its 50-day exponential moving average. So 1425, folks, that is a key level for you to be paying attention to. There was a question earlier inside the uh, Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den was, can we take a look at natural gas? And here's natural gas, and here's all that you really need to know is that there is no bullish reversal candle just yet. I know we're just looking at a bar chart. I guess you'll just have to trust me on this. I can take a look at it and know whether it's a bullish or bearish or candle out here. Uh, but right now, and, and so at this stage, you're trading below its daily and its weekly profiles. Yes, prices testing the uh, swing point back here from July the uh, 20th. We're actually trading below that, just slightly below that. Sometimes you get back to a swing, a swing point, and what you can see is uh, this is where price will stop. It is stop 
there before. Uh, there may be an A to B equals CD to the downside that is underway out here uh, when we take a look at it. But here's the deal. I don't see a bottom just yet inside of the natural gas. And that was from one of our denners out there. Uh, Might have been Tucker. Yeah, it was Tucker. So, Tucker, that's what the daily and weekly time frames are showing us. And quite frankly, Tuck, if we just go to a 60-minute time frame, just like we looked at on the uh, on the ES Mini, on the its daily time frame, and uh, we were saying you can't call a change in trend until you see support being broken. Well, we could do that for all different time frames. And here, if you look at the 60-minute time frame, that's the panel on the left. Price must close above the top of a 60-minute profile in order for there to possibly be any kind of even short-term signal out here and we don't have that right would require right now a close above two dollars and 14 cents out here so um i know everybody is hunting for a bottom inside natural gas uh, you really want to wait for at least on the daily chart some type of bullish reversal signal myself and even when you get that you're going to have resistance at 224 and a resistance at 230 that was the weekly and daily market profiles respectively this is Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento. We'll be back for the two-minute wrap in just a few. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Steve Rhodes filling in for Larry Pesavento. Uh, join me at 1 o'clock, although not today because the show is going to be archived uh, and replayed at 1 p.m. But uh, tomorrow would be a good time to uh, join me live. Uh, so our last question coming in from a uh, emailer out here wanting to take a look at, uh, oh, I see there's a couple out here. Let's see if we can get to both of them. No, oh, there's three. My goodness. So let's take a look. Uh, uh, let's, uh, the question is about Lightsweed Crude. What do we see in Lightsweed Crude? So when I look at the daily time frame chart, I don't see much. I don't see. I don't see any significance of a top or a bottom. I can tell you that 63.14 is uh, going to be significant resistance, and 51.84 is going to be uh, some support out here. That's where price most recently broke down and broke out. That's what the daily time frame chart shows me. I don't see anything on a weekly or a monthly out here. I think trading lights read crude. If you take a look at the, even a 30-minute time frame chart out here, I don't have any really great signals. I don't have any great signals of a top. Uh, we can see that the price is trading below on a 30-minute basis where it last broke out. That was at 56.33 out here. Uh, so um, I don't have a I don't have a, a good feel one way or the other with regard to Lightspeed Crude and where it wants to head to. If I did, I would absolutely give that to you. So uh, hopefully that uh, helps you out. So if you're not in the trade, I wouldn't get into the trade because I don't see any good bottom or top e even on a short-term time frame out there. And the next questions that came in, the last questions were gold and what's going on there. And uh, the easy way for me to uh, tell you is that this is a big bull trap out here. Big bull trap. Uh, look, what we have out here on a weekly basis is two confirmed tops out here. You've got the A to B equals CD pattern. That was confirmed with the shooting star several weeks ago. Then two weeks ago, we had a TD setup. Well, it was last week we had the confirmed TD setup nine count with bar eight being the high out there. That tells us of a top on a weekly basis. The daily chart out here for gold tells us of a top as well. It's got Stevie's Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. That was confirmed with that bearish engulfing candle, which also happened to be wave number seven. So we got a lot of sideways action action out there. Of course, we have that sideways action because if you're sitting over in London town right now and you're holding on to pounds, you're saying, how the heck do I get out of Dodge? And where those pounds are flowing right now are into gold. So traders over in London, over in pounds are buyers, not sellers. That's why gold priced in dollars is not headed lower just yet. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Tom and Tommy O'Brien coming up next. After that, You've got the, uh, you've got the, uh, I forget who you have. But then Basil, my replay, David White, Tom O'Brien. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks. I look forward to seeing you soon.